our channel. Today I'm going to um, make this baby lovey from start to finish. Uh, I am going to create the pattern myself and I'll show you how I do that. We have a little helper today. And, um, hey everyone, it's Leah. <laughs> from start to finish, hey, we'll make it's this together. Leah. Um, this is my very first time making this, my very first time making a pattern for this, um, so um, hopefully you enjoy it and can understand um, what I do. If you have any questions, feel free to put those down below. I'll try and answer them the best that I can, and let's get started. Alright, so here I'm making my template. I am taking some 11 by 8.5 copy sheets and I am going to tape them together long sides together so that my piece, um, I can measure out a piece that is 11 by 13.5. So here I'm marking the 13 and a half mark on my paper. I'm going to do that at the bottom. Then I'll do it again towards the top and then draw a line just marking 13 and a half inches. So here I was going to go ahead and cut on that 13 and a half inch line. Then I decided I might want to measure a little bit further out and then cut just in case I need to make some adjustments to this pattern. As you can see here, I'm just putting this together as I go, so I'm stopping, pausing, and trying to decide what I want to do, where I want to put things, and what is the best option for this pattern. So I know I want to make a little tab that I can hook or snap in a, a wooden teething ring. So that's what I'm doing here. I am measuring out a thin sheet of the paper and I'm going to set it at a diagonal on one of the corners of the square, the rectangle we just put together. So here I'm just deciding how long I want to make the tab. I'm cutting this piece at 6 inches, marking the 6 inch mark, and then I'm going to cut the paper.
So I wanted to give the tab a rounded end. So here I'm just taking my protractor and making a circle on the end. I decided that circle wasn't quite the shape I wanted it to be. So here I'm measuring down from the edge down um, three fourths of an inch. And then I'm going to fold the piece of paper in half kind of hot dog style to find the center make a little crease there and then I'm going to take the protractor and line up the center dot I just made with the line that is three-fourths inch down the edge and round off each corner there just at the end So now here I'm just cutting around the curved edge that I just made. So here I am marking a 45 degree angle right on that corner to find the center of that corner so that I can center my tab straight out. I hope that makes sense. If not, please let me know down below and I will try and explain it a little bit better. But you do have to have one of these square rulers or a protractor if you know how to use one of those and then you just draw a 45 degree angle line down the center of that corner. So here I line up my center fold on my tab piece right with the line I just drew and then I pull that tab until the corners of the tab paper lined up with the edges of the square of the rectangle paper. I hope that makes sense. And then I'm going to tape everything down and the um, pattern should be complete. Here I'm just writing down the measurements of each side so that if something were to happen to this piece of paper or this template, um, I can recreate it and make a new one.
now I'm going to use this template to cut out my fabric. This is a heat erasable pen, a friction pen. You can get them um, on Amazon. I like these pens because you just draw on your fabric and then all you have to do is use some heat and iron, a heat press, and it goes away. So for this pattern, I really wanted to use black minky for the back, but I just didn't have a piece big enough, so I had to switch and use gray instead. So instead of cutting one piece out and then tracing the pattern again and cutting the other piece out, I decided to lay them one piece on top of the other cut them both out at the same time. Here I'm using some safety pins to hold both layers together. You could use regular pins. The safety pins are just what I had right next to me, so that's why I chose to use them. I have been working on shirt orders all day, and so Malia was done playing by herself, so she will be in and out of this video, jabbering, interrupting, being a four-year-old. So in, hopefully you enjoy her presence in this video. Okay, so we've got this cut out. Um, in the previous clip, I, I made a pattern and um, cut two sheets. We have some helpers here today. <laughs> Maria. <laughs> and um, I cut two, a front and a back. So this fabric is a fleece. This fabric is a minky dot. I went ahead and embroidered Malia's name on it because I want to use this as a sample for my shop, for my Etsy shop. So what you're going to do is put this down. It's <laughs> gonna be silly. You're gonna put both. Let me turn you so you can see what I'm doing. Oh, okay. Hi. Careful, don't don't turn it. You're gonna match these up, top and bottom up, Hi. and you're gonna put right sides together. <laughs> Let's Right sides means pretty sides, so you're going to put your pretty side of your minky dot or whatever, your bottom, whatever. and your top together. Your top together. <laughs> Say bye, oh, funny. Get, you're funny. If you're wondering why I'm wearing the same clothes as um, previous video or why I'm wearing the same clothes in the next video, because I'm not sure which order I'm going to post these in, um, it's because I'm recording them on the same day. So here you're going to take these, take some pins and just pin along to hold these two together. I can do one. I can hey, do one. You're, make, you're making the camera move all over the place. Quit bumping that, please. Can I have one? No, you're going to hurt yourself. No, I'm just going to do that. I am going to do that. I promise I'm going to do that. Um, I learned to sew uh, by quilting, so I'm kind of a quilter at heart. So I, I can do what I promise. I like to pin in the middle instead of around the edge. I can do it. I Some people just pin around the edge. You can do that as well. Whatever works for you, you do. I can do one. No, please stop. Just try and line it up the best that you can. That's going to hurt. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to take this to your sewing machine. And I already have this really shifted, so I'm going to repin it. Let me do that real quick. It didn't, wasn't all lined up right. So just try and make sure everything's as lined up as you can get it. 
Having some help makes it a little bit more difficult to do that. Get this just right. <laughs> fingers and kind of brush them across the top fabric it'll it'll move the top fabric and leave the bottom fabric alone in place there you go and we'll just pin around again you got a chair for you You can pin. Are you okay? I can do this. I can. You can pin down here all the way around the edges if you'd like. I'm bumping the camera again. Oh, sorry. I didn't mean to. I turned it right. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> so you're going to sew all the way around. I want to. Leaving an opening. Cut. It doesn't matter where you leave the opening. I'm going to leave it here towards the bottom. Hi, everyone! <laughs> Enter. So leave Hello like a one. three or four inch opening here at the bottom so you can Hello turn it. One. Okay, we're going to sew. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So on here I have my walking foot. You don't have to have it. A walking foot. I just have mine on here because it helps a little bit. I'm going to do a straight stitch and I've got my stitch length set at three. And off we go. I said I was going to put my hole down here. So we'll start down here. Your seam allowance can be whatever you want it to be. Mine's just going to be about a half an inch. Make sure your back stitch. Be careful, though. Oh! 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 And I can feel that it's the bottom fabric ends right about there. The top fabric was stretching while it was going. It's not really helping me. You just moved it. I just touched it with my blankie. There you are. Okay, I'm gonna pause this and switch to my other foot because this one's not working really well. Okay. Change to my regular foot and then I turn this the other way. We'll see if that makes it any better. As you can see, it's shifted so much this way and then on this end it shifted when I was using that walking foot. It usually doesn't happen. Sorry everyone, we can't do this. Everyone? Quit, please. Thank you. Oh, this is working much better, so. When you get to this little, the tab, you're just gonna come up here, turn, keep your needle down and turn your fabric so that you're lined up with your presser foot so you have this, the seam allowance you want. And then 
just lift, turn to make everything fit underneath your presser foot nicely. I don't think I'm catching the bottom. Here you go. I'll come back to that on the other side. Yeah, yeah I told you, be careful. Those are alleys. I had a dream about this. You did? Yeah. How did it go? Very well. It did? It did? Yeah. It hurt me last night when I had a dream. When I dreamed about that. And it slapped me. Like, like this. Very good. It was a big giant needle. Whoa. And then it. Okay, so I'm going to check on this so side. And like I thought, I didn't catch this. So I'm going to. Sew it around again so it's nice and neat. I love you. I love you too. I'm ready. Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. That is very kind of you. Thank you. You're okay. Great. Now we've sewn all the way around. <laughs> we have our opening <laughs> here. <laughs> So I'm gonna go around and cut all this extra off that's on the left side of the um, stitch line that way. We don't have all that bulk inside. When we turn this, hopefully you can hear me, sorry if you can't. Your corners here. We're There's going to cut add a diagonal across the corner. Cut the tip of the corner off without Ooh, cutting your stitch line. And that takes the bulk out of your corners. Uh I got a mold. Here where the where it kind of got curves I in. I don't know if you can see that. This is the tab. Where it curves in, you're going to make some little clip snips here. Don't cut, cut your stitch line. Any different scissors. Let's try, no, let's try these. That's going to help it turn nicely um, and not have so much bulk in that area. Same over here on the other side. Just going to make a couple snips. Just where that corner is, that rounded corner is right here. Hopefully you can see that. And then up here towards the top. You could either cut real close to your stitch line like I have, or you can do the little snips around the, around the curve. That just helps uh, turn things, keeps it from um, having a bunch of bulk in that area. So here, I want to show you this. This is where my where my hole is for my turning. I didn't cut the extra off here. I left that long for a reason, so that when we turn it, it does. We don't have to fiddle with it so much to tuck it in. So we're taking the pins out now. Okay, we're going to turn this right yeah. side out. <laughs> Careful. I'm putting this under it. Oh. I'm putting this where it's Poke out your corners. Um, if you have a turnings. 
tool, you can use that. Um, or just a pencil. I don't recommend using scissors because you could push right through that and make a hole in your um, project. And then you could go to the uh, heat press if you have one of those or an iron. Use that and then you can just flatten these seams down, roll them out. I'm just rolling them so that they're all even. Um, here's my here's my hole. As you can see, that that fabric just wants to turn in on its own. That's why you leave that extra there so you don't have to fight with it. And I'm just going around rolling out my seams. And then you can go to the iron and, pr and uh, press it. Stop, please. Or you can heat press it to make it nice and crisp. I'm going to... I'm not going to press mine. I'm just going to use some pins. And I'm going to pin this hole shut. You can't see what I'm doing, sorry. Just pinning this hole shut. You put this back where I got it. That was my chance. Hey everyone! Did you see my hair? I see my hair. You're oh. silly. This one's going to hurt somebody. <laughs> Like, okay, now you're going to top stitch all the way around <laughs> the top of this. <laughs> and I'm going to just start hey wherever everyone. you want. The snake. Hi, 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 hi. And top stitch, I'm going to make it like an eighth of oh, an no. inch. Seam here. Back stitch at the beginning. Just go all the way around. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> go all the way around, and then uh, once you come back around to where you started, you're gonna back stitch again. Here it is. It's back. about minky fabric is it's very forgiving when you're sewing meaning you can't see the stitch I mean you could kind of see the stitch line but you can't see the thread inside there so where are you where are you you make some mistakes or whatever it it's very forgiving so here's our lovey come here this is one side there's the other side. What we're going to do is, I don't have any um, rings, but I want to add um, some wooden rings here. Right here. So, actually, I'm going to fold it this way, I believe. I think this way looks better. But you're just going to put a little can snap here. Um, of course, I don't have one of those wooden rings to gauge how big this needs to be. I just have a, my birthday hat? 
But that looks about right there. So let's let's go ahead and put one on. Okay. So I got this off Amazon. It's just a variety pack of these little plastic cam snaps, all different colors. I think I paid fifteen, maybe twenty dollars for it. I know. Uh, this I know. Tool. I know everyone. I don't know what's all over this. Anyway, cam snap tool. You can get that also on Amazon. Pretty cheap. I... No. 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 Thank you. Um, let's choose a color. What color should we do this? Orange. Mm -hmm. I was thinking purple. Let's do purple since there's purple in this color here. I'm going to choose one. I'm going to choose one. Okay, hold on. Let me close it up. Don't mess. Don't make a mess. Okay. Okay. With the can snaps, you have the attachment I parts here. You'll need two of the ones with the got, that are flat on the back. I with got the two point purple. sticking out. I got a purple. You do? I got two of the same ones. I need a different one. I got one. Okay. I got one. And then there is a male and a female uh, uh, parts that you will also need one of each of those. This one kind of sticks out a little bit. This one is has a little indention. That's kind of how they snap together. So you'll need one of each of those. I can get each. Take your piece, fold it over, kind of line it up where you think it will, looks good. I know how to line. And there's no real right like or wrong place to put this you can put it way up here you can put it more down here however you want to that's I up got to you one two three now you're gonna four, take your your five, poker tool kind of find the center eight, of your tab and you're gonna poke six, through both sides you're gonna go six, all watch your fingers on the back side because you will hurt yourself but you're gonna go seven, all the way through seven, push that all the way through just like that and this is creating a hole yeah. in your fabric for you to fit that snap in okay. and you pull that out I got a lot now you have a hole here there's something on it you have a hole here I got one and a hole here okay I don't need that thing so this one you're gonna take the top part Put it in here so that the point. Oh, it is around. through to the minky side. Wow. Okay. And you take either side, either one of these, the male or female part, it doesn't matter which one, and you're going to slide I'm it going over. To get a lot. There's a hole in there. I don't know if you can see that. You're going to put the point of the back piece through that hole there. And I'm going to you're going to take your tool. Two. On this black end is where you're going to put the smooth orange, back piece. Orange. Slide it right in there. Look. And then the top piece is going to go. Now, I guess. Or the pointed orange. piece is going to go up here. And the lock that's Make sure you have it all lined up. <laughs> Just right, otherwise you'll mess it up. And then you're just gonna press. Squeeze hard. You can do, you can turn it a little bit and do it again. Sometimes that helps squeeze that in there. So essentially what you're doing is you're taking this piece on this cam snap, this piece here, and you are squishing it flat to hold this other side in place with it. Hopefully that makes sense. So now you're going to I got go down here to your bottom hole. One. I got Put the snap one. through there. Points one. coming out on the minky side. Do you want any orange ones? Place your I got 
oranges. male portion over that. I got these Stick it in here. Same thing oranges. as before. This On this side, you have to make sure that you don't catch the edges what? of the male portion of the cam snap um, in the portion of this piece that pushes down and push it, clamps it together. I hope that makes sense. I'm sorry. If you do, it'll flatten that male portion. It'll catch the edge of this and it'll flatten it and then you won't be able to snap there. it shut. But here you go. Now you test it. See if it snaps. And it does. Make sure it unsnaps. And I'm you've waiting. added on your cam snap. Alright. So waiting. here is your personalized baby lovey. Hopefully you found this tutorial helpful. We had a little helper so we had um, some extra talking in there. Hopefully that didn't interrupt what I was explaining to you and um, thank you guys for joining us and if you found this content valuable please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more tutorials like this or behind the scenes of Malia's stitches and how we uh, operate and make our uh, orders, feel free to subscribe and hit your notification button so you don't miss any of our uploads. So we will um, see you guys next time and thank you guys so much. Bye!